Um, and I think this version of um, process parameters is relatively well aligned with uh, what the regulators um, look for. So you will find as you kind of get out and start working on this in, in various companies that you start to see all sorts of additional um, uh, you know, PPs or PAs uh, appearing in, in different people's sort of process uh, terminology. And, you know, I think that's down, that kind of comes down to human nature that, well, it, you know, it, it doesn't strictly impact quality, but we know it's important. So let's call it some other type of, um, you know, CPP. And I, I've got a few examples of that later on. What the agencies really are looking for is, is it, crit is it a critical process parameter or not? Um, they don't necessarily recognize, I mean, you may get away with well-controlled um, critical process parameter, but they, you know, they won't um, really, you know, get into language like NCPP, non-critical process parameter, or, um, you know, some of the other uh, variations that people have added in, in, in different companies. So this is, um, I think, a, a model that's, you know, taken from the AMAB case study and is relatively well um, accepted through the industry. I think the, you know, the key distinction for me is about whether it's affecting the quality. So this is the attributes of the molecule. Um, and this can be, you know, either in process or during release. Um, and in that case, it would be a, a critical process parameter. Or is it something that's affecting process performance, uh, in which case it would become a, you know, a KPP. So this is a key, uh, key process parameter. Um, and that distinction, I think, is you know quite important as you go through and uh, identify uh, how you're going to determine or how you're going to classify each parameter that you look at. Look at. 